Welcome back to another episode of A Very British Space Programme. We're on episode 31. It is the 3rd of December 1963 and we have Messenger 2 heading for Uranus uh, or Uranus uh, and it's departing now using its interim transfer stage. It's going to spend uh, a few hours uh, leaving the Earth's sphere influence and, uh, and then we're off. So let's get going. So, as we see Messenger 2 just departing Earth's uh, sphere of influence, Earth's shrinking into the background there, please remember to like and subscribe and comment down below. So, this episode, we are going to um, launch some more interplanetary craft, we're going to uh, put some more crew up in orbit in something a little different, and we're going to try and improve our communications. But first, we need to do some maneuvers to try and get this interaction with Uranus, or Uranus, I'm British, it's Uranus. Um, a little bit closer you can see there just the smallest move on our rcs is making it wobble all over the place but there we are we have our set ready to go so with that messenger de departing uh, it is now the 16th of december 1963 we're getting very close to the end of the year and we're going to have one final launch this is messenger 3 and this is going to go to neptune it is launching on a blue night 2 um, and this is going to go up into orbit and hopefully it's going to sit there until early 1964. It's only going to sit there a few weeks, possibly a month or so, um, until we get our transfer window. But we're trying to basically get stuff up. We've got fuel that can sit in orbit for a while, so it's it's actually good for us to try and get these things away from uh, away from basically uh, the pad because we have a lot of missions coming up and I want to try and keep the pads free. We're trying to get the, the construction lines going. We're currently just knocking out a, a range of these probes they're all basically the same design same sort of layout everything's same about them so it's it's actually cheap for us to produce well not cheap to produce but cheaper than it could be they're not bespoke for every situation we're sending them up and they, these are going to be used as much as we can we could go smaller on some things um but it would actually cost us more in tooling so we're actually just going you know we've got the launch capability let's do it and so you can see here the the blue knight 2 is is actually a very capable craft and it, it puts that into a a nice little position there and we decouple a, uh, the transfer stage with the, the probe on top there and you can see actually for the first time a good look at that, that transfer stage and that probe just as it separates away slowly. It looks really quite nice doesn't it? The transfer stage does look a bit odd though. We've gone for a, a very no noticeable colour color scheme there but while that's doing that let's move on to 1964 it is the 16th of january and this is davy one this is d001 uh, and this is an alternative design that we've got it looks just like a, a faraday on a white trident 2 on the launch pad but it's actually a different design we've gone for it's a it's a single crewed cabin and this is an alternative to the the avro canada and team inspired faraday uh, davy obviously named after a particular scientist that came before Faraday if you want to go and look it up obviously you know you all know who that is um, I may tell you in the next launch who it is but uh, have a think think who you think it can be so anyway what's the design philosophy here well, what we've actually done is we've taken away the idea of a capsule we're using an outer casing that's basically a fairing with a heat shield on the bottom and we're going to stick inside it a pressure vessel just a standard pressure vessel very similar to what we've used on our aircraft in fact so we're basically taking that simplified cockpit type style uh, pressure vessel that will allow us to actually you know transport crew and whatnot and we've put it inside here this is a completely autonomous craft it has a control core uh, avionics of its own that communicate with the ground so this thing is actually capable of dealing with all its maneuvers itself unlike the faraday which needs a pilot inside so we have one crew inside this and that is barry slater he is our rookie engineer he's the first third member of the third astronaut class to try and say that quickly to fly out of the seven and he's our second engineer to go up on a craft so he is he's trying this out he's obviously been involved somewhat in its development and you can see there the the actual um the service module on the bottom is very much uh, uh, an adaptation of the Faraday service module. We've, we've basically used a lot of cross pollinization here. We've got reduced the number of engines from four to two. We talked about that in the last Faraday mission. Um, fuel tanks have been reduced as well, but we do have that, that, that pressure capsule in there. And potentially this would allow us for longer on orbit because it's basically a simplified craft and it's only one crew member. 
So he's gonna basically spend a little bit of time in orbit. This is very much sort of like the, the mega rock equivalent if it had gone to orbit for us, uh, if you ever look back in the books. I've actually got a video on that. I should probably link it, I probably will forget. Um, so he's gonna sit in orbit for a little while until his uh, lithium hydroxide reserves get a little low. Next time we're gonna have to upgrade that and we'll probably improve the scrubbers and go for a longer duration flight. But he, he proves his concept a little bit. Um, we're going to use at, uh, at about 130 kilometers up, we're going to use what's left in the service module to actually slow the craft down before we jettison it. That was a plan anyway. So the idea was use whatever fuel we had because we've not tried this before using fuel to just ease our, uh, our return a bit. And it, it's not going to give us a lot, but it'll, it'll ease it a little bit, make it a little bit easier on the crew. So that's the that's hopefully the plan on that one. Um, and so he's going to bring it down through the atmosphere as best he can. Um, we decouple the service module. Everything looks fine. Looks just like a Faraday on its decoupling. Although we notice that the service module does not move away as far as the Faraday. The Faraday has been leaving it until about 120 kilometers up before it's been detaching its service module. So it's around the same range. But then we have a little concern, which is the service module comes back and we get a contact. And that, that starts to worry us because this is an automated craft. It does not have the RCS built in that the, uh, the Faraday does. It cannot easily self right itself. This is very much a dumb return craft so the concern now is that it may become stable in a different orientation and luckily it seems to move itself back but it's gonna have a wobble and you know I'm gonna be honest with you but Barry was a little concerned at this point and we were we were a little concerned as well of course at this point we then start going through plasma blackout so we can't understand any of his screams if you look in the picture there he's screaming he's screaming quite a lot I think he's worried I think uh, but, but he's fine he's fine it's good the good thing is he's actually going to land back down in Australia. So he took off from the UK um, and he's hopefully going to land in Australia. You see there we've got a little bit of building up of heat just behind just behind the heat shield there. And we're going to have to have a look at that heat transfer a little bit. We think it's something to do with fairing positioning and what we've got attached where and things like that. We need to build some sort of buffer into that. So that's going to be something we're going to work on. We're not sure if the Davy actually has a long term plan, but it allows us just to continue to put those one-man crew up and, and get some maybe quick science if we need to, if we need to do anything like that, or if we actually just have any missions for, for just simple things like that. And it's also a little training craft in many ways, um, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So he comes down, lands easily, lands in Australia, and so he's gonna, he's gonna, he's, he's got to uh, to Australia from the UK in about seven hours, which I think is a record now for the quickest flight to Australia. How wonderful! All right. 19th of January 1964 and we have the departure of Messenger 3 so it's actually been up in orbit for about three weeks we've had obviously the New Year break we've had a bit of Christmas break and whatnot we've had the launch of the Davy from from uh, from the UK there from uh, Spade Adam and now we're going to just have the departure of Messenger 3 and it's going to move swiftly out of the sphere of influence it's going to do a little burn on its own engines there because Neptune, of course, a little bit further out than maybe this craft is originally designed to really push for, but it's got the it's got the fuel reserves to get it. Neptune's a nice big target. So it's gonna head out there um, as much as it can. Just gonna refine that orbit a little bit with RCS, just a small burst of the main engine occasionally, and just bring it in. And you can see there, because we're so far away, the slightest, slightest little changes just massively affect that there and we're just going to hold it there and we will probably have to refine that but as we depart earth there it seems to be on its way again Hesperus 4 seems to be performing really well now um now first of february 1964 and we have messenger one entering the sphere of influence of mercury and you can see its sensors are working full flat out right now as it's coming towards mercury it is going to come in nice and close we refined its approach earlier and now it's basically just going to come in now we could spend some time doing a burn at uh, periaps and try and refine a, a, a secondary encounter after this but we decide not to we decide to actually just focus on gathering as much science as possible we need to just make sure we're transmitting and getting as much science as possible we don't want the engine getting involved in any of that you're not messing up at all so it is just going along sorting that out getting all the science lovely science and what we're actually going to do is as soon as it comes 
through past Mercury, then we're going to look at potentially any other interactions. Um, unlike the uh, the Neptune craft, it, which is going to take 20 years to get there, we're actually going to be pinched, potentially, if we get our uh, our um, rendezvous and so forth correct, we can get another encounter, hopefully a messenger, very quickly. You know, flying to Mercury is a lot quicker than going to those outer planets. Venus, Mars, even quicker. So, you know, once we're down at Mercury, we've got lots of opportunity to get there. We've got a lot of speed going on. So, Messenger 1 completes its first part of its mission, which means the Messenger program has a success on the cards already. It's achieved that. It's got data coming in from Mercury. First time visited. Absolutely wonderful. We get a big load of funding into the books because of that, which was absolutely wonderful. The charred planet is no longer a mystery to us. We send all these pictures back. People can see the, the bright surface of Mercury. Interestingly, we passed on its day side. So uh, it was hot. Luckily, the craft seems to have survived that okay, but uh, we'll have to think about where what orientation we're going to come past in the future. And we want to try and keep away from the sun because we don't want this craft to get too hot. So now, in order to get another rendezvous, we're going to do a burn in uh, in a, in a few months. Um, it, we're actually going to move around our orbit quite a little bit, but we've got a burn in, in just under a year. And, and that will allow us to have a second encounter with Mercury in around two and a half years. So that's that's actually not bad. We're actually going to be within within the next three years. We're going to be back at Mercury probably before we get much on other planets. So we're going to get a second shot at going over Mercury and gathering all that data with a minimal burn. What we need to do is start working on these little sling paths to the craft. So the 8th of February, 19. 64 and from Spade Adams we are launching a constellation of geostationary satellites to complete a large government contract. We have a large contract which basically requires we put four satellites in orbit um, and so we're going to do that from Spade Adams. Spade Adam currently is not doing interplanetary work. We're taking a little break from the uh, the astronaut class there while we, we build up a, a stockpile of, of craft ready. The, uh, the Faradays have you know, proven themselves with their first two missions, but we've got, a, I think, at least three more missions slated. We've just got to get the craft produced, but we have this completed, this, this geostationary satellite constellation is ready to go. You'll see we're going to use one of those interim transfer stages because we've got multiple engines on the back. We can actually fire a couple off, then we can actually fire the next set off for, for any changes. So it gives us a bit of variability there. We're launching this, interestingly, on a uh, on a Blue Knight, a Blue Knight two i think yeah we're using a blue knight two um which i think is the first time a blue knight two is actually launched from spirit adam but we'll have to check that um, and on the top there we've got four specific bespoke governmental um geostationary satellites that are uh, doing their communication for us um the positive with the intermediate transfer stages, as you can see, it's got uh, it's actually got three sets of engines. It's got a single engine that we're actually engaging to do this final circularization because this is actually quite a heavy payload. It's over the 20 ton limit that we would normally have. These satellites on the top are actually quite heavy. Um, it was decided to actually go for heavier satellites, so we've had to uh, counter that. And then we're going to use another four of those engines. So uh, we've now used five. So those four engines, which are actually going to do the transfer burn out towards um, where we want to go. It's it's going to going to be push the, the push the craft forward. We're going to do that long burn to take us into the geostationary transfer orbit, which is wonderful. And then that's going to leave just a little bit of fuel left, and we're going to use the final set of engines to start that circularization. But what we're actually going to do is. We're going to send it out there and we're going to do that burn but put ourselves on a little resonance orbit so that we can actually release a craft once per per orbit and put them spaced out instead of actually putting them into you know, odd little arrangements we're actually going to space them out just a little bit so that's the plan anyway we're going to space them out doing that so we're going to use that interim transfer stage to achieve that for us and you can see as there we're just trying to get our timings right to get a, a reasonable resonance on this orbit um it isn't perfect um, but it, it's not a bad resonance. I think we get. I think we get. It's not a perfect four to three or something like that, or four to five. But uh, we do. We do figure it out. You know, we, when you know it's about twenty four hours, you can you can space things out reasonably well there, as long as you've got you know a relative multiple of it. So we uh, position the craft. Obviously, it's spinning crazily. Now this is all uh, fueled, powered by those um, 
those nuclear uh, nuclear thermal generators there and there we go we're just uh, firing up our additional thrusters and getting all that energy just out of there and now the intermediate transfer stage is basically spent we're basically looking for fuel we can't find it we can't really see where the extra fuel is there's nothing there so we're just going to start detaching these craft which is wonderful we could do this automatically just fire them all off at once but we decide to separate them individually just to make sure that there's a bit of spacing between them because we don't want them to be bumping into each other so you can see they each have three iso thermal generator things on the side and and things like that so these are each going to do uh, their own circularization so we're going to give you an example of one here so it's actually spinning a little bit as it does it um, but that's that's fine it's stabilized um, it's using its little uh, one kilonewton thruster that's going to use it to to basically circularize and perfect the inclination and each of them is going to go through this process of burning one after the other and spacing themselves out and we're actually going to name them after the four winds we're going to call them euros notos boreas and zephyrus so they're going to be the four winds around the earth and they're going to give us complete coverage of signal across the planet we've actually got um omnidirectional antenna on these we're going to allow us to communicate fully around the planet we do not have any of our dish technology on there so they're not going to be used as the relays to the to the moon or anything like that we have craft for that already in the other constellation uh, craft for geostationary that we're still building up and we don't need a lot of those we just need a few of them at any time to do this so this burn takes a while because of course it's a one kilonewton thruster and it takes a while just to get burning but it, it works its way through there sorts itself out how wonderful all done sorted perfect there we go and we're just going to keep doing that with all of them you can see there in the top right hand corner we complete the mission you can see the names of the craft there so as this mission is completing and they're just positioning themselves around the earth in perfect little synchronized orbits so that we've got this four craft being able to com communicate around while that's doing that i'm going to say until next week have a great one